Hey guys, this will be a full guide to Delphox that use Pokemon in Pokemon Unite. First off, Delphox is a special attacker, you know, ranged attacker, mage kind of style, very squishy. All the damage output this Pokemon comes is from spells or moves, and it pretty much does zero auto attack damage. It can go into jungle, it can go into lane, even though I think right now it probably would prefer more to go into the jungle position, because for laning phase it's still quite weak. I will go very single a Dead Fox move in this build or in this guide, but first off, let's talk about what I think is the best spin, and it's currently, I would say, Mystic Fire and Fire Spin. It just does the most out of all the moves, I would say. Fire Spin has big potential to be a very strong move. And for hit items, honestly, this Pokemon is quite weird. So, the second ability, which is either Mystic Fire or Fire Blast, can actually crit. But Dead Fox doesn't have any crit rate. As you can see, if you don't turn up, there's zero crit rate, but those moves can crit. So there's a lot of different things you can maybe potentially do on this Pokemon. I think I would always run choice packs. And for other hate items, my favorite thing so far has been Buddy Barrier and Focus Band. Just, you know, having a bit of more defense stats cause you just kind of die very, very fast. And as a jungler, I think those items are very strong. Your Unite move has very low cooldown, which means you can proc Buddy Barrier quite often as well. I've also been trying some energy amplifier, but I don't think it's that necessary. The current reduction is okay. The energy rate doesn't really do too much as well, because you have your unite move up so fast anyways. It pretty much increases by like two or three seconds, so not really that important either. Um, I've also tried, you know, double glasses, muscle band. I think you can pretty much just play your style. I also tried this, razor claw and scope lens for, you know, for the full crit things. But honestly, I think the most consistent thing for now is this. And that's what I would also recommend. But if you jungle, you can also go muscle band for more jungle clear. If it just makes sure that you clear jungle much, much faster. And for one defensive items, I would always play body barrier or focus band. And for better item, I think eject button is probably the best you can run. There's also, I guess you could also play something like this. This could also be totally fine. And I think it has to be figured out a bit more. But yeah, I think this is just the most consistent. If you want to just live and do consistent damage output, then this is probably the way to go. For the basic attack, we pretty much have nothing. It's just absolutely nothing. It does very low damage. Boosted auto attack only does a bit of bonus damage as well. And you can see the auto attack is pretty much just very, very bad. Um, then we have Willow Wisp and Ember. Ember is just a straight up skill shot that flies in the wrong direction and it only does damage. And it can be body blocked. So it, can, it can't pierce, it only hits one Pokemon. It does pretty good early game damage. If you play lane, this will probably be your last hitting tool. But again, it can be body blocked. So, you know, if, if there's a Blissey or Wittitaf staying in front of your AR Dino, then you will not be able to do it. And then you have to use Will O Wisp, which is similar to Swift on Eevee of the Espeon one, where you shoot out three flames in direction onto like a circle. And if you hit the flames onto someone and then the circle as well, it explodes one more time and does a bit of extra damage. So pretty much can do two times if you so if you miss the circle, um, it will only do the flame damage. But if they're in the circle, then they will also take explosion damage. But they have to get hit by the flames as well. So if you do it like this, they only take explosion damage and they don't take you know the flame damage. Dead Fox's passive is also kind of weird. So if you drop under half HP, your next move will do a bonus damage. So right here, if I do it. You can see that thing, you saw that blaze, right, flying to that small flame. It has a 15 second cooldown, you can see it right here. And yeah, so it's just, it's. I feel like all these are kind of weird, so you have to drop under half HP for this to happen. And once this recharges, you can do it again if you're under half HP, and it's gonna happen again. On level 6, when we fully evolve to Delphox, we get to choose between Mystic Fire and Fire Blast. Mystic Fire is very similar to Ember, it's just a long range skill shot that explodes in the end though, so it can do AoE damage at the end, this entire explosion will hit targets, but it doesn't pierce. So you can see, it doesn't pierce, it will hit the first target hit, um, but again, it does AoE damage, so on beasts it's actually quite nice, if they spawn here, we can ember, we can mystifier them, and they all take damage in that cone around the first target hit. On 11 we pick up mystifier plus, and this is what makes Mystic Fire so strong. It reduces cooldowns on hit, so after hitting something you can see the cooldown gets reduced, by 1.5 seconds, if you hit an enemy Pokemon. On white Pokemon it says, they can see it, it's only 1 second, but on any Pokemon it's 1.5. And it also reduces the scale of, or the cooldown of your other moves. So we Fire Spin, use a Mystic Fire, and you can see my Fire Spin reduces. Can do another Mystic Fire, and we have another Fire Spin ready. And this is where, like, you know, the Pokemon start shining. You always want to be level 11 as fast as possible. And I just want to show you guys something. As I mentioned, Mystic Fire and Fire Blast can crit, but Fire Blast has 2 high of a cooldown, so it makes no sense to play it. Here we have 8.1% crit chance now with Razor Claw and Scope Lens. I'm just going to show you guys how often it happens. So, obviously I have cooldowns out right now, and I really don't think it's worth it. I think some people like do like it, but you can see how often I use Mystic Fire right now, and it hasn't happened. I actually counted yesterday once as well. It happened three times in one game. I, that was the first crit. 
It's, oh, there we hit the second crit. I mean, it's insane RNG. And, you know, something like Krasse, at least, he has like three chances of getting the crit thing out as well. Um, so the chance of you actually critting are so, so low. It's very hilarious, though. Seeing someone like get crit for 3,600 damage is absolutely hilarious. But I really can't say if this is a viable build. <laughs> Maybe if you Night Move and Fire Spin will crit as well, it could be fine. But I just want to show you guys how high the chances of you are to crit. I mean, it's 8.1%. It's super, super low, right? But it can happen. And if it happens, it's very hilarious. Especially with the fire spin as well. That gives you extra damage on the fire spin. But yeah, I'm not sure if I can recommend it. If you guys want to have very hilarious moments, I can. But otherwise, I think other items are just a bit more consistent. Another level 6 move we have is Fire Blast. Another long range skill shot. Pretty similar to Mystical Fire, but this one is fully AoE. It's gonna throw this wave, and after a time it explodes and does some bonus damage. And that's pretty much all it does. It gives you a bit more burst, so if you can, if you you know do it with fire spin, do a bit more burst. But besides that, it just lacks that cooldown reduction that Mystic Fire can offer. Also, never to be pick up Fire Blast Plus, which is just more damage. So right now you can see our damage, 2,075, and then we pick our plus thing. But yeah, it just increases damage of Fire Blast. That's all it does. And now we do 2,288. So not too amazing. Number seven, we pick up Fire Spin or Flame Charge. First, I'm going to talk about Fire Spin since the main bit I wanted to talk about. And it's you put down a AOE circle, a tornado, and it's going to chase towards the first target it locks onto. And upon reaching the target with the, you know, the submitted thing, you can see the middle Pokeball there, it's going to wear them up and stun them. Of course, you can also cast it instantly onto opponents like this, and it's instantly going to stun them. And this thing follows someone around for five seconds. There's like a maximum range to it, but you can see it's quite large, right? So I think and here it won't chase anymore. Yeah, this is like the max range of something, but this one will still chase. And again, it chases for up to five seconds. Also, it's AOE. It will lock onto one target, but everything around it will also be fire spin. So right here, you can see everything around it. It looks a bit weird, but everything around this gets around the main target that actually it focused on gets completely whirled around as well. Just right next to the main target. It's hitting. So, make some very good CC in teamfights. Obviously, you want to try to stay hit as many people as possible. But you're going to make sure you know who the main target is for your abilities to, you know, kind of follow up onto it. On level 13, you pick up Fire Spin Plus, which just makes people take more damage as soon as they're controlled. So, while they are stunned, you do more damage to them. If they're not stunned, you don't do more damage. Right here, you can see 2,100, uh, 2,000 damage. We Fire Spin. And now it's, again, not 2,000 because they were not CC'd. So, they have to be actually CC'd. So, right here. Bam, 2,400 damage or 2,300 damage. So, yeah, they have to be, you know, when you see that those stars above their head for the confusion image, um, they will take extra damage from you during this time. The other level 7 ability is Flame Charge. Pretty similar to like Mystic Fire on Sylveon or what else, Stored Power, I guess, but not really Stored Power and Espeons are quite close. You jump into Direction, you spawn three flames under you, and they're gonna seek out the first target hit. Very straightforward, and the second and third flame are only going to do 70% damage. What's kind of weird about this move is that if your enemy is not close, you don't get those flames. So you actually have to be in range or proximity, right? even right here. Okay, this is actually this is exactly the range, but if you do it a bit too far away, you're not going to get those flames. But yeah, it's a small dash, you're going to only summon those flames if an enemy is close, and then it's going to seek out that first target. It hits. So it does have pretty good mobility, as I will also show later on with Mystic Fire. But besides that, it is pretty lackluster, does not love damage, but it gives, you know, it gives this Pokemon that does have mobility some mobility and being able to kite. And again, it has very good synergy with Mystic Fire, which I will show a bit later. Flame Charge Plus gives us a bit of move speed after the end of Flame Charge, which is quite nice. It also makes this Pokemon even look more funny, it's like it's running, it's running to get you. Um, but yeah, we just get a bit of move speed after Flame Charge, and that's pretty much all it does. But it's pretty good. It gives even more mobility, even more chance to kite, more chance to chase as well. On level 9, we pick up the Unite move, and this Unite move is actually quite, quite strong. It's a huge AoE circle that you lay down. It's gonna see damage over time and reduces the HP recovery of anyone hit by this by 50%. So, anything that has like self sustain, like Blissey, Trevenant, Focus Bands, even taking berries, being under a goal, all of those gets reduced. And it has the lowest quit in the entire game at 84 seconds. So, the lowest before were like Pikachu at 89, but this one is now the lowest in the entire game at 84 seconds. And it lasts for quite a while. And it also slows. So on, on, on the Corpfish right here, gonna start walking towards me. 
and you can see it actually slows for quite a good amount as well so in the end in the beginning i was like how are people going to be stuck in this and then i saw the slow is actually quite quite decent so it's very good for zoning it's very good if you have any you know other unite moves that lock people into places or any other cc you cannot just combo it with your fire spin right you fire spin something you pop unite move on them and they kind of have to walk out of it if they don't have abilities they might just die in this entire slow as i said before level 11 is where this pokemon really starts to shine with mystical fire plus and it just gives you a lot of cooldown reduction, so you can chase around, you can throw up mystical fires, fire spins, on Mars as well, and just do it a lot. And the Unite move also, if after using Unite move, right, we get some cooldown reduction as well on top of it, so I'm just going to use my Unite move up here. Um, I'm going to start doing, look how often we can use our mystical fire now. Much more often, we can do another fire spin, mystical fire. So your, your job is pretty much just dropping Unite move in teamfights, and then using the extra cooldown reduction you get from Unite move to just have much much lower cooldowns besides that it's very straightforward we want to fire spin something we want to make sure we hit a guaranteed mystical fire let me try to hit a mystical fire as well but they chase us go into another fire spin another mystical fire another mystical fire into you know <laughs> you know what i'm doing right? you understand right it's very very straightforward I'm not sure how it looks with fire blast so fire blast gives, just gives you a bit more burst onto like the first target right or like a bit more aoe damage but besides that, it just makes your cooldowns be super long, right? Like, we pretty much do one combo, and then we're out of the game for such a long time. And that's why, like, Mystic Fire just seems a bit better, just because you just have much lower cooldowns. You do one combo, your basic attacks nothing on this Pokemon, right? Remember, the basic attacks do absolutely zero damage. They're, they're, they're super weak, super, super weak. So we do a Fire Spin, a Fire Blast, and then we kind of just, like, try to auto-attack a bit, I guess. But even if you walk into auto-attack range, you kind of die. And I can also show with Unite Move, I guess, since I did the same with the other thing. So we saw Unite Move. And then it's like quite long. I mean, just don't really have Unite. I mean, there's so many other abilities. And that's why I think Mystic Fire is just superior. And for the same reason, Mystic Fire gives cooldown reduction. If you play Flame Shard, you always have to go Mystic Fire because it just completely resets your cooldown on level 11 almost. It's like the only way of making it work. So if you don't play Mystic Fire, you should not do it. And there's some really fun things you can do with this as well, actually. You can use your Mystic Fire or Flame Charge while you cast Mystic Fire. So you can kind of aim it somewhere and then jump towards it somewhere else. Like this. Or you can gap close a bit as well if someone is far away you can kind of do like this and chase a bit more i just cancelled it there that's kind of weird i didn't know you can actually cancel it as well with that so it might be a bug actually sometimes too it's so gotta be a bit careful i guess and uh if you press our unite move again i'm gonna show it right here wait move cooldowns are on I'm gonna use our unite move and then you can see often we can use it so flame charge mystical fire can flame charge again mystical fire flame charge again mystical fire that's pretty much, you know, how you can make this work. So, it's pretty difficult though. Again, you don't have CC with this build, right? So, if you miss a Mystic of Fire, you're kind of stuck in something else. But yeah, it's, it's a very fun build. And again, I made a video about it as well, right? It's very, very fun. Also, make sure you always use your Flame Charge before Mystic of Fire, of course. Otherwise, they will be on a cooldown. But yeah, you can use it at the same time, which looks kind of hilarious. Looks pretty hilarious. I, let's, let, me, let me try something. Can you also do like... Yeah, you can, you can gain love distance with this. Not really useful. Um, I'm not sure how useful this combo is to do, but it's quite, quite hilarious. That's pretty much all there is to it, this Pokemon. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? You just cast abilities, so... We fire spin something, we fire, drop Unite Move on them, make them slow, and we obviously try to hit as many Pokemon as possible as we can. Obviously, I'm gonna... I will always go back and play in a second, and I will show you guys, you know, how it looks in an actual game. Let's jump into some gameplay, as I mentioned, and we will be jungling. So I'm going to show you guys how this Pokemon feels and looks like in jungle. It has the clear is pretty fine. It does take quite a while. Again, if you want to be a bit faster, you can run Muscle Band in this game. I did not have Muscle Band. So I'm going to start clearing this. And yeah, it's going to take a bit. We also want to clear maybe the Leap Up a bit later, because we can get level 4 for the red buff. So don't want to clear these things too fast. Right now, I'm not level 4. That's exactly what I meant. So I'm always wait a bit, like try to kill the leap up maybe at 45 if you can, or wait a bit long on the blue buff, because then you can clear red buff a bit faster. It doesn't really change much, but we could be level four already, pretty much after killing the leap up and the buff. Since we are a you know level four evolution Pokemon, it happens quite fast, and we do get level four from those two together. Looking for our first gank now. Our ganks are not the strongest. We have okay damage. The main part is just having red buff, right? Red buff. We just try to auto attack right here, blinking in for the red buff, have him slowed, and then we hit our Ember and Will Wisp. So make sure they always red buff slowed first before you throw out your skill shots. There, I just miss it, but we get a nice 2k, 2k on the top side. Gonna look for a score now. The early game is not the strongest. I mean, it's quite okay, 
It has fine damage, but yeah. Again, we don't have Muscle Band. If you want to early game, do a bit better, you can run Muscle Band. I'm gonna try and chase the Cinder Ace now. <laughs> my auto attack just do no damage. He blinks away or goes away from my Will Wisp, and I just have to hit an Ember. If I don't hit an Ember there, I'm pretty much actually dead because my auto attacks don't kill it. My buffs are respawning already, so I go in for the Cinder Ace kill over the Beast, I think, which obviously is probably pretty correct. So, gotta wait for buffs to spawn. Now we already pick up the Mystic of Fire on level 6. So now we start being a strong character. Level 7 is where we truly start shining with our fire spin. And then our ganks are actually quite strong as well. It's very easy to get kids with fire spin. It's, it's very straightforward to hit. And again, the fact that it chases someone around is quite, quite strong. Looking for some corpfishes here. Um, but again, you have to be very careful. You're very squishy. And I think it's gonna... I, I was a bit too aggressive here. Like, a bit too greedy. Sinead jumps over, his rep buffs slow on me. I hit a lot of combo, and actually the Sinead is almost dies to me, but I'm still rep buff slow. I couldn't really make it to the berry, or the much up would have killed me, and the bottom lane Pikachu sadly paid attention as well. And I actually go down in the middle of the map. But yeah, you saw my damage potential early game on Sinead is there, because I also dropped on half HP. I was able to proc my blaze on the Sinead, is, and I actually almost one-shot him. So early game damage is quite, quite good. I think it just falls off a bit towards late game, where... Early game you do good damage because you're a jungler, you're two, three levels above everyone, but as soon as everyone's kind of the same level, you will start, you know, dropping a bit in damage. So I'm gonna clear our buffs, trying to get level 9, dread spawns in 20 seconds, so I'm gonna clear this fast. Fire spin it, missing fire, wait for a red buff. And then, so dread fights are very awkward though. Um, you kind of want to just go for kills, right? You don't have good last hitting, but you can kind of place a unite move between you and the enemy or the Dreadno and you, but you still need your teammates to kind of hit it. So if your allies are not hitting it, it can be get quite awkward. So here we get level 9. I'm just going to look for kills. I'm going to look for fire spin into unite move if I can, walking up and already poke quite hard. Poke is very good into this Pokemon. So we hit a fire spin there, missing a fire unite move, as I said earlier, right? Pretty straight on combo. We fire spin, try to hit unite move for as many as possible. Sinais can't get away as well, and now we get a nice triple kill. Now we take our attention towards the dread, but again, I'm looking for kills there because I can't really secure a dread and we don't really have good secure. So we get another kill and there we finally get it. After getting four kills, now we can look for a score as well. I'm just going to fire spin to zone them away. The Pikachu gets stuck in it. Um, could have maybe gotten a score off. I'm scoring here. Again, you guys know I don't like killing goals, but Cromorant would have killed the goal doesn't matter what, so I'm just going to get myself some experience. Time to recall again, trying to hit level 11 as fast as we can, so going to run to my buffs. He actually helps me out. Oh, what a nice guy. Solar beams the buff for me so I can take it faster. Gonna take this as well. And you see how oh, Unite Move is almost back up already again. It's absolutely insane how low cooldown this Unite Move is. Actually missed my Mystic of Fire there. I mean, it's a pretty tiny skill shot, so it can be missed quite, quite easily as well. <laughs> even on even on wild Pokemon that move a bit. And nothing really happens now, but we could just look for a fight again with our Unite Move. But in the end, all our Dinos are up, so I'm just gonna farm this instead. There's nothing really else to do, but I think this Pokemon will probably be a bit better when it comes to like coordinated play because with this Unite move you can actually dive second goals, right? It reduces the HP recovery from goals as well, so you can just place it under the second goal and just run, try to make your opponents fight into it. But again, the enemies also have a high chance of having this Pokemon so they can use the same for defense, right? But if only one team has a Delphox, you can actually go for some plays. Here we hit a nice fire spin on the as well, hit our Mystic Fire. And again, we just want to re reset our Mystic of Fire and Fire Spins as much as we can. Fire Spin on myself. I'm just Unite moving here because I run Buddy Barrier. And, and it, actually, I'm an energy amp this game, but I really don't think it's necessarily the way to go. Um, again, I think the, the bits can still be optimized and still be figured out a bit. I think it's just someone has to do math on it, which head items make the most sense. But in the end, I think most of those are fine. It's just a Pokemon that can run off different head items. Sally died to the Sinais Unite there. Can't do much about it, just get ran down. We tried to live with the Mystic Fire and stuff and Fire Spin. But the <laughs> Unite move speed was just a tiny bit too much. So yeah, Dread is spawning now. My Unite is almost back up. It's like 60%. So if I just farm a few things, I can actually get it quite fast. But then he's already got some kills there, so we really can't go for this Dread whatsoever anymore. So, uh, we can still go to Bot Goal so to defend it, because after Dread, they might just overextend and go for a push. So I'm just looking towards it. I need one more Corpfish and my Unite move is pretty much back up. I should have went for it, but um, yeah. My Crumb used Unite move, so I'm just going to look for a kill right here. Can't quite do it. And yeah, we should probably push though. Like right now, one guy is dead. I can drop my Unite move onto the goal, but I hit a nice Fire Spin. And now the enemy. There's the enemy. It's Death Fox Unite. I want to proc my Unite. It's actually quite messy. Like So your ones is a bit bluer and the enemy ones is a bit more violet. That's how you can tell which Unite move is from which side. And now I can see the kiting potential as well. Getting chased by two, I hit a very long Mystic of Fire range. I use my Fire Spin a bit closer to me so that he has to run into it. Now we blink after him, Mystic of Fire, eject button, another Fire Spin, another Mystic of Fire. And we take down the Machamp. 
So it's very good at kiting opponents as well still if, they, if their opponents have their move speed or movement abilities out. Here again, we fire spin, Mystic Fire, Mystic Fire again, and this guy kind of has to run. I'm gonna start recalling now. And jump back to mid lane. Now we're just trying to form 14. So if enemies have their move, movement ability gone, they are actually quite easily kiteable, especially melees, right? It just depends, like, much champ also has unstoppable effects. Of course, full heal. Full heal completely destroys fire spin. So if you play against any full heal characters, it can be quite, quite difficult to play. You just, they just press full heal or safeguard. This heal is getting popular again just because of fire spin. There's a lot of people just running it just to mess with their foxes. So any unstoppable effects obviously completely counter this Pokemon. So if you still play against something like Water Sport, Rapid Spin, Blasters as well, you absolutely have no chance. So another Mystic of Fire, I'm just going to Unite both here because I can do it one more time. It's one minute left and this Unite is very low cooldown. So hit another nice Mystic, double Mystic of Fire on it. And now the Machamp is on me. I try to kite them. I have Fire Spin under myself so you get stuck in it. And we actually live on 1 HP. Mystic of Fire, Mystic of Fire again. Has very long range. We get a nice double KO, barely live on 1 HP. So between melee, just put Fire Spin between you, right? So they have to walk into it or otherwise they have to turn around as well a bit. Of course, you can also place it directly um, above them, but... I think if they just run into it, it activates a bit faster, you know, because if you place on top of them, they're already walking, then it might have to chase, you know, it has to chase into the direction they are actually chasing us in, if that makes any sense of what I'm saying. And uh, now we get 15 actually in this game, so we are quite, quite strong for, for this late game team fight. But late game team fights are super difficult. Like every, every late game team fight, I struggle with this Pokemon. I think in this game, it went kind of well for us in the end, this this next team fight. But yeah, I think late game team fights positioning is super super difficult on this Pokemon. You need good frontline, you need to have a support with you. Otherwise you can't really walk up. Like if anything just unite moves you, you're just kinda in a bad position. So he's spot out the Pikachu, I'm gonna try to fire spin him. Fire spin is also very good to face check brushes, right? Or face check bushes. Because if, if someone is in there, you can see fire spin chasing someone. So you can always tell if someone's in a bush or not. So right here I'm checking for someone, but no one is in there, so it's gonna go with the corpfish. They have still have a Cinder Ace up, so there's the Cinder Ace, and I really didn't want Zapdos to be flipped. And we actually get it. Like, I was looking for my opponent still, because we didn't really have good last sitting. I'm actually, you know, we had a Dragon Knight, but yeah. You can never really trust solo queue Dragon Knights, doesn't matter what. Um, we lose Zapdos, but I find a nice Fire Spin, Mystic Fire here, and then meet Fox. And no panic yet, we just try to look for more kills. They can't really score if we just kill them, right? They can't make it to our goals. Another Fire Spin, getting chased by the guard shop now, trying to dodge his things. Gonna fire spin him again very far away and we hit another nice Mystic of Fire. Now Pikachu is looking for me as well. And I barely live. For now, I hit another nice long range Mystic of Fire, another Mystic of Fire. Another double KO. So the range we get is quite quite nice. Another fire spin. Looking for the Mystic of Fire. Can't quite reach it. And now we're totally fine. Now we're actually winning. They couldn't score. And you can see how much we can kite. I'm still kiting, still kiting, another Mystic of Fire. Keep looking up. But sadly, much shame with unstoppable effect, jumps over, and I get hit by the close combat max range. That was a pretty bad death because they can still win the game right now that we died. But one of us scored 100 points on top lane, so we still have a decent lead. This Egg Slash is getting a nice kind of Machamp. Has to be careful though. He, he is doing the right thing here as well, by the way. He recording there is 100% the right play. Just letting this, like, we are, we are still ahead. Letting this tier 1 go die is very, very smart because it might just bait us into a bad fight on there. It's very difficult to defend tier 1 goals. So him going back is actually very smart. I'm really happy when I see people, you know, do smart plays in solo queue. Can't do much there. Now I'm going to respawn as well. I have my Unite move up. It's very good for defense, right? If they have, they try to capture goal anything. I'm still looking around to see where I have to jump. I see a lot of people on bot lane though. And yeah, my Unite move is very, very good defending goals as well. Because it, I mean, does damage every half a second. So it pretty much continuously interrupts scoring. And then means just take damage walking onto your goal. And it just buys so much time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I mean, people always want to see damage numbers as well. There we go, 71,000 damage. I think my average was always between like 16 and 80,000 damage per game. The highest one I had was 111k, which you maybe saw earlier today. Hope you guys enjoyed this guide. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Bye.